Shut up, compressor. Hey everyone, I'm Matt with Duke's Models, and this is the Flank Off. <laughs> With the Great Wall Kit's exhaust in a pretty good place for the moment, it's time to turn our attention to uh, stabilators. Now, I've already gone through two different attempts on these and kind of stripped them back because I wasn't happy with what I was getting. The first attempt, I essentially painted it metallic and kind of darkened it up and then came in with oils and tried to do it, just it didn't work. So that got stripped away. Then I tried to just base it in. Mr. Paint, Super Fine Silver, do some sponge masking with Gun's Mr. Masking Saw, and then I sprayed a Mr. Paint Burnt Metal Blue on top of it, which is this lovely stuff here, and took the masking, flew it away, and hated it. So stripped it back again, and now we've got basically a utility coat of GX2 on. I didn't really focus on getting super high amazing gloss I just wanted smoothness because there's gonna be stuff going on on top of here and it's gonna to have to live under masking for a while so I just I want to make sure that it's durable in addition to looking decent because I'm not going for holy shit amazing reflectivity I'm just looking for something that will work so my plan is start with this I'm going to use some K colors chrome 63 which is a darker chrome doesn't really, in my opinion, look quite like chrome, but it looks like metal, and it looks like darkish metal, so that's going to be perfect for this. Once that is on, I'm going to come in here and mask all the various little lines that you see on the reference photos. Now, this is a good point to pause and offer a Great Wall a bit of an apology, because when I was looking at these earlier on, I noted that it looked like Kitty Hawk did a better job with the rivets and everything than Great Wall. But if you actually look at the reference photos, these rivets look pretty true to how they actually look on the real thing. A lot of those sort of lateral lines that are going on, there aren't rivets on them. They're just there. Now, one thing I don't know, shut up, compressor. One thing I don't know is why they're there <clears throat> or why these stabilators, why the front half of them looks all heat stained when why would it? Why would it be heat stained out here? It's not like the exhaust is flowing this way. You would think if the exhaust was affecting the stabilators, they would want heat shielding back here, not up front, because the engines are kind of over here. <clears throat> I don't know what the deal is there. I don't know what, you know, why this is the way it is. I'm assuming this is some special alloy for strength and lightness or something, and they might, the best theory I have is that they put some sort of anti-corrosive coating or something on top of it and that just degrades over time and so you get left with you know that sort of patchwork thing that just looks like heat staining but isn't really heat staining or maybe that stuff heat stains really easy I don't know I don't know anyway going off the reference photos and what I can see you basically have these rivets that some of them have stuff along them some of them don't and you've got all these little lateral lines and you've got a couple vertical lines that are more of like a grayish, brownish, sometimes they even look blue tone. And so my plan to tackle this, start with this, add the Chrome 63, give that a little while to set up, seal it in with this K-Colors gloss, which will kill off the sheen a little bit, but it's, you know, it, it doesn't totally destroy it. Then I'm going to come in with some Azu tape, probably this 0.4 millimeter business, and I'm going to mask off where all those little lines will go. So, you know, doom, 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 tons of them. Then I'm going to come in with oils and do the various staining and weathering and stuff that goes on around them seal that because they're oils you're gonna have to seal it because otherwise they take forever to cure and when you're doing you know rivets and th yeah it's worth sealing them so after that is all done I will come in with masking fluid and I will mask in the open spaces and then I will pull the tape so we'll have a bunch of little 
square blobs of masking fluid with kind of ragged edges, which is exactly what I want in this case, because I don't want these lines to be exactly arrow straight. I want them to have a little bit of nastiness on the edges of them. Then with those, I will paint them some sort of gray with some brown tones or something like that. I still haven't worked out exactly what I want to do there. I am considering something like this dark gunship gray because it's that sort of nasty grimy gray that kind of comes close to what I'm seeing but I will have to spend a bit more time staring at reference photos before I make up my mind there but for now let's go ahead and put on some chrome 63 And honestly, of all the metalizers I've ever sprayed, I think it is quite possibly the most foolproof to get a nice coat down. The only problems are, A, it's really hard to get over here in the US. From what I've seen, the color tones, if you want to go into like the brasses and coppers and pale burnt metal and things like that, are a little bit limited but I can't you know that may not be the case because I've only glanced at their catalog a couple of times there's also a potential durability issue um, I know that when I did a tape test of this stuff last year I got a little bit of tape lift it wasn't pulling up sheets of it but it was kind of degrading the finish so it's one of those where if you need it to look flawless, say you're building, you know, a P-47 or a Sabre or something in bare metal, masking becomes kind of dicey. But as you can see, we've got pretty good amount of reflectivity on this. When it hits those shallow angles, it gets really dark, which is exactly what we want. If you look at the photos of the SU-35, they do exactly that. So, add a little bit more just to give it a little bit of extra boost on the opacity front. As you can see, this is an acrylic, so it does that whole evaporative thing that they do. Set this one aside and we're going to go ahead and tackle the next one real fast. That is looking pretty sharp. See there's a lot of prettiness in it. Got a nice degree of reflectivity. All right. I am happy with that. Let's go ahead and lock that down. So now that these have been painted up and are looking their part, I'm gonna give them overnight to kind of cure and then come in with the super gloss. Then we can start having the real fun of more masking. All right, the stabilators have had a good 24 hours to cure up and now it is time to place a ceiling clear on top of them so that we can go ahead and move into masking and all that good stuff. And for that, we're gonna be using K-Colors X100 Super Gloss, which is weird because this stuff, I've sprayed it before on non-K Colors things and it tends to have some surface tension issues. But on top of K color stuff, it goes down just fine. Crazy how that works. Real fast before we get into spraying though, 
I did a quick test last night on the Kitty Hawk of the K Colors gloss versus some Tamiya X22. And you can see the two of them kind of side by side here. So this is the K Colors on this aft section of the stabilator. And up here is X22, and up here is an X22 wet coat, which did, I think, more harm than good. But the main difference I can see between these two is that the X22 seemed to lighten things up, and the K Colors gloss didn't. So it's a pretty close call between these two, but I think this one, because we want to keep it a darker tone at this time, is probably the way to go. So I'm going to say that now, and it will spray down all fucked up. One frustrating thing about these uh, stabilators is there's no really good place to hold them because they change thickness. And so you put these locking tweezers on them and they kind of flop around. It's good for holding them while they dry, but holding them while you're maneuvering them and they kind of tend to slip. So fingers it is. All right. Safe side, we will start on the underside here. Last little swipe here. Make sure that leading edge is in a good place. Okay, so we've got these coated. Now, let that set up, and then we'll be good to start the masking process and all that fun stuff. So, yay. So with the stabilators clear coated, I fell into a bit of procrastination trying to figure out how I wanted to proceed. And I ultimately decided that I would go ahead and lay down a couple of clear colors before I got into the fun masking that you can see underway here. This is basically clear yellow, clear red brown, clear blue, a little bit of clear green mixed in with the red brown to tone it down a bit. And yeah that it has us where we are now. It's a bit dirtier. There's that kind of sort of staining. And then we've got these lines that are gonna be masked off. And ultimately, when we come around, once all this masking in here is done, I'm going to come and fill in the areas in between with liquid mask, pull the tape off, and then we're gonna go in and add in these various lines that you see all over the stabilators. Hopefully between those and the various heat staining here and oils that will come on top, it will be visually interesting without looking terrible. Fingers crossed. Now on this one, I have no idea how the hell this happened, but we've got a little thing that happened here where the, uh, where the K colors chrome sort of lifted off and I really don't know how well this stuff spot treats, but my plan is, if you look at some of the photos, there's kind of, you know, in the, in the various gray-brown stuff, one of them I have has this sort of brown smudge thing happening all in here. And so I figure I'll just cover that up with that and kind of let that be a thing. And, you know, some of, the, some of these elements in here look a little bit swirly, which I really didn't want, but I figure once we have all these lines going, not only you know, along the rivet pattern here, but also this way, there's actually, if you count from over here, there are five of them. You know, they, the ones down here sort of end quickly. And I think only two maybe get out here, two or three, but you know, you're gonna have these lines crossing all over the place and that's really gonna break this up and I think it should work out nicely. So it's time to tape. Well, let's mark attempt number three as a pseudo failure. So I went and did all of this fun masking 
burn through a whole bunch of Azu tape. And my plan was to essentially come into these little open areas and mask them with some liquid mask and then take the tape off and have these kind of raggedy line things here that I could then spray with the airbrush, right? Except when I put the liquid mask down, it turns out that if there's even a micron of the stuff touching the tape at all, when you pull the tape up, it takes all of it with it, just gone. So this led to some frustration and the removal of a bunch of tape. <laughs> so my plan now is to basically use the idea of this, but instead I'm gonna come in here with this 2.5 millimeter tape, which doesn't quite match the width, but it's pretty close and use this to kind of block off these areas. And then use this kind of warm, dirty gray Gundam marker to come in and bring over the Kitty Hawk Mule. See, I've already done a little bit of this in here. This is just freehand, but it's literally come in here and draw that shit on like so and then we can come over with oils and airbrush and stuff but this will give us the basic line that we're trying to follow and then as you can see this stuff holds pretty well unlike other markers it's going down and it's not coming up so that is the plan at the moment So when it comes to applying the lines to the stabilators, I don't have too much of a concern about being able to follow the various rivet lines because there are lines to follow. It's more the lateral ones that you can see represented here by this uh, one little strip of 0.4 millimeter tape. You know, following these and keeping them parallel to what's going on up here, and then these, this other one that sort of splits the middle from here over to here. <clears throat> Those I'd have no faith whatsoever in my ability to freehand. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use some wider tape, slightly wider, 2.5 millimeters I believe, to essentially block out my lanes. Now I'm not sure I will be able to do this with the stabilator in its current position because I need to be able to kind of get directly over it and that means essentially setting it in my lap. So I will give this a shot but being able to see where things align is critical, so I might have to pause and revisit. Maybe we can do it this way. Motherfucker! Fucking June bugs. That was fun being dive bombed in the goddamn face by a beetle. All right. So I just laid this tape in here kind of along this line. I'm preserving the one piece I'm asking that will provide some utility for me. So we've got that one in place. Do a little bit of burnishing. I mean, we're not spraying and you know we're using a marker for this, so everything should go down fine. And so on and so forth. So I'm gonna go ahead and mask off the rest of these and then we'll come in and play with some marker. Okay, so we are all masked off and ready to start playing. And for this one, we're gonna be using this Gundam marker. Now, one nice thing about these Gundam markers is once they go down, they tend not to run. So that'll be really useful as we're making our way through the rest of this. Basically, all you do at this point I found these are kind of like Tamiya paints, where one thing you really don't want to do is Go back over your line too soon. 
go back over it too soon, you actually seem to sort of gum up the tip. Which is why if you can see over here, I've got all these scribbles, that's kind of me clearing the tip out. And then just another thing about this is I'm not trying to be particularly careful. I don't need totally perfect lines. If you look at the actual reference photos, yeah, they're straight, but they're kind of ragged. That's pretty much exactly what I want to be happening here. Okay, so there's that. Okay. Peel back the lines. And we've got this nice little pattern going on in here. Just like so. You can see it's a little bit heavier out here, which I want it to be, and I'm actually going to come over that with oils, I believe. And then we need to come in in a few other spots and do some vertical lines. Sort of like, well, not quite this side yet. But if you look over here, you can see we've got a vertical line working there. And we've got a few over here. And curiously, it seems to cut more through the Mr. Paint than the other stuff. I'm mean, going to guess there's probably an alcohol base in this marker, which is the reason for that. You see, these little lines do a lot to sort of build up the visual interest of what's happening here. And slowly but surely building it in. And there are going to be oils and things like that that are going to go on top of this to further sort of blend things. So it looks a bit kind of stark and janky right now, but hopefully that's not where we end up. Right, so I'm gonna go ahead and finish inking these in and then we'll come back. Cause I'm sure you wanna watch me draw a whole bunch of fucking lines, right? And here's where we are at after the Gundam marker application. So again, this fantastic little doohickey kind of a warm gray and we've got this type of look going on now what I'm gonna add on top of these is first of all oils so oils are going to help sort of batter up the surface a bit provide a bit more softening for these lines and a way forward and once we do the oils we'll probably then come in and do a little bit of airbrush work with clears and maybe even with a few solids so work has been ongoing on the stabilators and I've been working mainly with oils at this point to kind of beat up the surface of it. The problem is that you have to go in layers in oils and it's kind of tough to do that without them smearing into each other. So over on SMCG, uh, Ian Candler posted earlier today about inks and that got me thinking, what if I brought some inks into play here, especially for getting some of these heavier lines that you see in some of the stabilators. And so I have been playing with inks. Nice thing about inks is they go on and they tend to stay exactly where you put them. They don't run, they don't go all crazy. So for getting these lines down, it's actually a pretty useful thing. Now it is gonna mean that we're gonna have to come in a bit heavier with some oils and things like that to you know, obscure them a bit and all that, or blend them in a bit better because they are kind of stark despite these being transparent inks, they're more translucent. So as you can see, there's quite a difference here. We start working them in. And then once these are set, we can play with oils on top of them without worry about them smearing and all that. So what I have done is I've essentially, this is a mix of 
Burnt Umber and uh, Cthulhu Blue, Cthulhu Blue, whatever the hell it is. That. And then I've got good old Burnt Umber, good old Cthulhu Blue, and Gray. And so just getting in here and messing these up a bit, having some fun with it. So if we want to put a little bit of gray tone, for example, in another one of these rivet lines, because they typically aren't quite as prominent. As you can see, it doesn't really move around too much. You can put it pretty much where you need it to go. Just like that. If we carry that down here. Like so. This gray one actually gets a bit dustier than I would like, but you know, it does a good job for that faint outline. And once these rivets get uh you know, washed and things like that. There'll be a lot more fun stuff going in here to kind of break all this up. But yeah, that is where it is headed. So I'm gonna get back to this and we'll come back when the next stage is ready to go. It's funny how every time I work on some sort of multi-layered thing like the stabilators, the amount of available bench space seems to compress around it until there's literally just this little tiny box that I'm working in. I mean, I've got pigments and paint and brushes and foam blocks and you know some of the missile things that are going on in sidecar to this and it's a little bit claustrophobic but I'm I think fortunately finally getting to the point where I'm almost about ready to wrap up these damn stabilators so let's catch up quickly on where they're at so last night I spent a good amount of time playing with these Liquitex acrylic inks so, transparent burnt umber, Cthulhu blue, neutral gray, all those kinds, and basically getting something in there for those lines. I have since tonight come through with some Mr. Paint exhaust soot, which is a basically their version of to me a smoke, but instead of glossy, it's flat, which I hope will give me some purchase for the next phase of this, which is going to be bit more airbrush stuff and then more oils to dirty things up. So on top of that matte clear, I also went ahead and added some clear blue in a few places just to get that shit finished out. And the thing with the blue on these is sometimes it's very prominent, sometimes it's not depending on the reference photos. So I'm just kind of going in however I want to based on sort of a balance of all the reference photos. Still not getting, I think, close to necessarily what I want, but this is a matter of maybe not having the materials or the know-how to get to what some of the reference photos show. However, we're gonna keep on plugging away. So now that the exhaust soot and the clear blue are in place, one thing the reference photos show, especially in sort of this double rivet area and then down in here and this sort of center stabilator place you see this kind of dirty shit on it it's almost like a brown tan gray color so for that I'm going to mix up some Mr. Paint dark gunship gray and some Dunkelgelb just to kind of warm it out and lighten it up and then I'm going to put that in here on the upper surfaces a bit messily along that double rivet area and kind of build out a little bit of grunge. Okay, because this is super precise work, I'm gonna go ahead and take this off the bench so I can hold it and get better light refraction and all that. I'll be back in a minute. So as the garbage song goes, it's all over but the crime. And it has taken a much longer more arduous road to get to this point than I figured it would, but here we are. So we've already dealt with the engines. Now the stabilators have finally been essentially put to bed. I still have to put a clear coat over these oils in order to be able to safely mask them. We still have to pull off the leading edge to see what, if anything, bled under with oils that's entirely possible. And we probably have to repaint that with uh, 
some sort of happier aluminum thing. I'm thinking the K Colors XF44 Illuminata, which sounds awesomely secret society-ish. But for now, I think we're in a pretty good place. So in terms of a quick wrap up, there were a lot of things tried that just did not work with the stabilators. Um, you know, the idea of giving them some sort of a dark blue finish just didn't really pull together in my opinion. The idea of a silver finish, sponge masking, and then a dark blue finish pulled together even worse. Um, if I were to do these again and try to not go this heavily weathered route, I would probably try to find something a bit darker than this Chrome 63 and spray it and call it a day and just ignore the fact that they actually weathered. Uh, if I were doing, the, doing it again exactly like this, I would again try to find something slightly darker than this and I would probably stay away from putting the clears down as early as I did and then get a few different colors of these awesome Gundam markers to bring in these lines. Now, the things that worked really well were using the acrylic inks for accentuating the Gundam marker lines and then drawing these little tiny vertical ones. I mean, these are a nice, very subtle gray color that show up and don't show up depending on the angle you're looking at, which is fantastic. I think the oils worked rather well, particularly the, uh, you know, the Cthulhu blue, I keep calling it, which lends this nice bluish shade to things. The uh, sort of build up here of the stain with Starship Filth and Sepia and Neutral Gray, also a highlight. Neutral Gray in and of itself, and then some transparent gold ochre sort of sponged around in here and stippled with the uh, Deerfoot Stippler really helped build a sense of warmth, which was getting out of hand with all the blues and whatnot going on, and a sense of grime and just general dirtiness, which is what I am trying to reflect here. So the use of oils really worked well. The only thing I wish that I had a bit more control over is the sheen, because the sheen of these things in the reference photos is pretty much up there. I mean, it's metal, you know, it, it's, it's shiny, it's reflective. And I just don't feel like we're really capturing that here because the oils have flattened things out. And so that's one where I'm kind of up against the limits of my knowledge and my materials experience and what could actually be utilized to still have the sheen underneath but have the flat elements really showing their own thing and not just falling off when you mask them. So that will have to be an experiment for another time. One final kind of frustrating note. So I tend to be a bit of a reproductionist when it comes to my painting and weathering choices. I will, you know, find a subject that resonates with me and then try to recreate it. And that's something that, you know, isn't always possible because of essentially my skill sets or because the reference photos don't quite show everything I need to see or just the nature of we're working in plastic and not, you know, a 40 to 50 foot long piece of metal with all kinds of things on it and in it. But in this case, I don't feel like I was able to really essentially go with my reproductionist instincts because all of the things going on in here, you see at different points in different reference photos, but there is no good consistent set of references that show not only what the hell is happening on the stabilators, but they give a sense of why it's happening. And there are some where these are straight up dark blue. There are some where they look more like just kind of a dark steel color. There are some where you see these heat lines, there are some where you don't. There are some where you see a few of them, there are some where they are like a light blue, there are some where they are a dark brown, there are some that have these stains running along them, there are some that don't. There are some that show, you know, the blue on these on the tips out here, there are some that don't. It, it literally, there is no rhyme or reason that I can make out for what the hell is going on there. You know, you look at something like the, uh, the F4 Phantom, and the weird stain lines along its heat shields, that, you know, after the engines. And that's basically where the rivets and things go and they just build up heat differently and so it shows differently, fair enough. With these, A, I don't know why there's heat generating all kinds of discoloration this far out, unless they're literally packing rockets on the wings and shooting those off all the damn time. 
but that seems pretty excessive to be causing that kind of heat damage. So yeah, I I don't really have even now a good sense of what's going on in the stabilators, and you know you catch these really tantalizing glimpses from really far away of like oh there's these cool lines in there and stuff, but it's in a you know 1100 pixel wide image and it's one stabilator and it's one tiny little piece of the image. And the ones that are nice and zoomed in that show you all kinds of stuff are usually focused in here at these big sexy engines. And so you get like a little sliver of what's going on in the stabilator, just this little tiny taste, and that's it. It's like, you know, person, if you were standing here shooting, why couldn't you turn the camera this way just for one shot? Well, we go with what we go with. So essentially this is not really a recreation or a reproduction so much as kind of an agglomeration of different references out there butting up against what I feel are my own limits in being able to pull this off. Uh, just, you know, needing essentially more experience in heat staining and a better understanding of what the fuck's happening up here. But we have stabilators now, so I'm going to give these a couple days to set up because we've got oils in play and I want to give them time to do what they do best. Then we'll clear coat these, mask them off. Again, come in here, probably have to touch up and or repaint the leading edge. And then we get to move on to the camouflage, which from what I understand is uh, gonna be a fun challenge to recreate because some of these colors don't exactly carry through. I think the darker blue and the gray are supposed to be the ones that are a bit off, but that's fine. Uh, to me, honestly, now that all this shit's done, mixing up a couple different paints seems like a nice walk in the park. So, thanks for watching this installment of the Flank Off and the fun with the Stabby Stabilators. We will check you later.